Hello, hello, Ederson Oliveira here for dinandhere.com. Today I only have with me, but it's enough, it's okay. I have Scott. <laughs> Scott, how are you? Hi, doing good. We are missing, we are missing uh, Joe in action, so uh, not sure what's going on. I hope that everything is okay, Joe. Uh, first mm -hmm. of all, uh, happy Thanksgiving. It's, uh, it's two days uh, after Thanksgiving already, but it's Thanksgiving mm -hmm. holiday in any case, so happy Thanksgiving to our US friends. Yeah, maybe we can call Saturday the Black Friday Hangover Day. That's it. That's and I purchased quite a, quite a lot of interesting stuff. Actually, some of the stuff that I purchased, I'm going to be showing today. But uh, but hold on a second there. Nice, nice. So actually, if, just so you know, so the, I'm in my parents' house in Indianapolis, which happens to be on the Eastern time. So this is the first time I've actually had to do a monthly meeting where I, I can do it at 10 a.m. rather than 9 a.m. So I'm excited about that. Very good. Good to know that. I hope that you're having fun there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what do we have new in, in November? Um, not too much, but I actually have a, a, a quite a, a full agenda here. So first of all, as usual, let's talk a little bit about the releases. So we have we had a CTP7 release of DNN8 back November 10th. And this is the page with the release details. It seems that the latest release of, of uh, DNN8 have been focusing quite a lot heavily. Of course, minor, minor things, but a lot on the D dynamic content creator, the DCC. So again, that's one of the things that is mentioned here on Joe's uh, post. It's about the dynamic content creator. And there is a lot of things like removing site log, removing vendors and banners, which um, yeah, that, that's, that's, that should be really a, uh, an optional plugin, uh, an optional module that you install after, afterwards if you need. So again, there's a new CTP release. There is a schedule in place for up to the, to the final release of DNN 8. So beta 1 is supposed to come out of the first week of December. So it's pretty much the, the, the coming week that we are getting ourselves into right now. So that's a beta one. That's what is forcing to be uh, released. Then the uh, release candidate one is supposed to come late December. Release candidate two is supposed to come early January. And the final release or the final initial release of the real thing is January 14th. So let's see if that schedule will will stay like that. And we will know more as we go along. Next Thursday, you're gonna have a, an MVP meeting where usually uh, Joe Brickman covers how how the status of, of the schedule release. So again, very exciting and very good to see that we have DN8 right there in our, in our uh, no, in, in the short, month and a half, we should be having, uh, not month and a half, sorry. Yeah, about month and a half. We should have the mm -hmm. first release of DNN 8. Yeah. Good, okay. In terms of news in general, uh, I was discussing this with uh, with Scott and we thought that it would be appropriate to to mention that uh, uh, Charles Nurse uh, had, is no longer with DNN Corp. Uh, he, I think that if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I read through the years that he, he he was either employee number one or one of the early, 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 I mean, less than five. I mean, you could count five people uh, involved with DNN back then, and he was one of those people. So he he's no longer on DNN Corp, but he will be as he shows on his blog posts. Again, all those links will be in the video details. He shows that he's still, you know, very much into the DNN space. He will be contributing, and he will be actually joining the Arrow Consulting team, which has uh, Sean Walker as one of their uh, lead uh, personnel, their lead uh, team leaders there. So he will be joined mm -hmm. the uh, Arrow Consulting team, and that will be starting January first. So again, he's still very active. I can uh, point you to a few blog posts that he already has done after the fact. 
related to DNN. So again, still very active, still involved in it's good to see that one of the founding pillars of our community is will still be around even after moving away from the DNN Corp. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this one here, I, I'm, I was going to give to uh, Joe to, me, to comment on that. I'm just going to briefly comment. I don't have details. Actually, I didn't gather details here because, again, I was expecting Joe to be around, but he's not. So that's about Dean and Com. Uh, he is one of the people heading the next Dean and Com. Um, again, I don't have the details right now I was, I was hoping to have him around but there will be a, a dnn com seems to be around uh around end of may beginning of april do you know that scott uh yeah in, in fact i was going to bring this up too because if you remember from our last conversation joe said that he had a an announcement for this call so i mean obviously we have to follow up and and we can't wait another month but it's uh, the DNN con is going to be. I I think the plan is in Baltimore. I believe it's April second and to third. It was around the April first time frame. Um, I can't remember what the Friday and Saturday is, but the the first of April. And yeah, it's going to be in Baltimore. So that's uh, as far as we know. And um, it, and I don't know if you want to mention some of the other. DNN events. So two, 2015 was pretty bare in terms of DNN events. You had the DNN Connect and that was it. And then 2016 looks like it's going to be the very opposite because what it looks like is is shaping up is obviously the European guys still want to do DNN Connect in the springtime. Then um, I, I think once the announcement was made for the Baltimore thing in early April, uh, I think they were maybe going to think to move the, you know, the DNN Connect, which is normally in May, a little bit further out into like June, uh, or and maybe even change the location. I need to go back on the website. I can't remember if they uh, if they finalized the location or a date yet. So we might have to check back on that and talk about that in, in December at the end of the year uh, next month. But um, and then the announcement was made that the Charlotte group is going to do another, I guess, Southern Fried DNN in the fall in Charlotte. So three events. Very good. The, the, the more the merrier. I think that uh, it shows a little bit the, I don't know, I have the feeling that I, I see a renewal commitment of uh, from the community with with DNN. You know, I, I, I get this feeling that things are, you know, th there's a renewal commitment there, and uh, that might be just the uh, some of the proof of that. You know that people re-engage within the community and they have more events around. And uh, again, I think it's great to have two. Uh, I, I know that they want to establish some sort of uh, annual routine, and that's what Joe was uh, mentioning last time in our MVP meeting. But uh, but yeah, I mean, if we're gonna have three, I mean, the, I want to make at least uh, to two of those. You know. Yeah. Perfect. So let's wait for Joe and, and get more details. I know that more details will come out. Uh, I'm hoping that by end of December in our next chat, we have a lot more details and you're going to have Joe around as well. Um, next here, DNA context, uh, contest. I, mm -hmm. I'm not being part of that, but I know that, Scott, you are part of that. Do you have anything there to, to mention about? Not really an update on that. I um, I think we till the beginning of the year, and um, um, yeah. So I mean, not much, not much going on. What I'm hoping to do is to maybe kill two birds with one stone. And um, as I'm working on my next video set for, uh, as an NVC, you know, module, a proper one. That I'll combine some of those concepts and, uh, and and basically do my tutorial on the project that I intend to work uh, uh, for this uh, this uh, contest project. But I got to get moving on it. I'm a little bit behind because they you know they announced it over a month ago. So so I'm uh, I'll be busy the next couple of weeks. 
actually you, you you have just about a month now because they need submissions to be finished by January 1st. Yeah, I know, but I just know how it is with the holidays, traveling and all that stuff. I better get it done in the next few weeks or it's just not going to get done. Perfect. Okay, so again, deadline is uh, January 1st, so you still have uh, about a month there. I'm not sure the deadline is for the submissions or it's for it's to have the, the, the whole thing done and, and, and finished, you know, and, and that's it, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I, I did a, I submitted through the form that's on that. Um, I don't know if you're going to have a link to it. I can, I, I can have, pull I it. have it. Yeah. I, I mean, I submitted for, I don't know. I don't know if it was clear that, that, what the, if it was a submission deadline and a, and a, a, you know, a completion deadline, but I, I, I'm pretty sure the one January 1st is the completion deadline where you, you have to have your module on GitHub and finished and ready to download. Got it. Yeah, it seems so. As far as I can see here, January 1st, people should start. No, actually, January 1st is the submission deadline, and then January 14th is the. Actually, hmm. I don't understand this well here. They say winners announced, community choice voting begins January 14th. A little bit strange here. So you, you have to have your your project, I think, finished by the first, and then there's two weeks where people can start reviewing them, and then they can vote. Okay. Starting on the 14th. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. terminology here is a little bit uh, strange, but I think that you're, you're right. So, okay, so again, uh, shout out, a call out for the ones that are still waiting to submit their uh, module that is PA or MVC modules out there. So that's the DNA contest. Now, now this is an interesting one, and I'm excited with this one here. I didn't even mention to you about that, uh, Scott. Um, I I've attended about two weeks ago uh, a Southern Fried DNA user group meetup, and I did that via GoTo meeting, and it was a presentation done by. Clint Patterson on the IO, IoT of, of a combination of IoT and DNN. So Internet of Things and DNN. Quite nice presentation. I have recorded that. Unfortunately, I unfortunately uh, Clint wants to because it this is a, a a a project, a product that he's working on, and he wants to keep it private for now. So I may not be able to release that that video, but the, the video is very impressive and got me really excited with the Internet of Things. And again, great presentation from Clint. There is a, a link to to the user group meeting where uh, it's described. The, the meeting is described here. Again, this is this is the closest thing that you can do that you can see without watching the video. I mean, it's watching the video would be great and perfect because again, it really got me excited with this kind of stuff. Uh, but again, the, the second best thing is really going to this link and, ha and reading through the notes of the presentation. But uh, basically, this uh, he he demonstrated he went from the beginning to having some sort of an end product end product there, and at the end we could control his device local there via his DNN website. We could log, we could go to a page as an audience member. I was not there. I could go to this page and I could click some buttons and depending on what I click, the device there did some stuff, you know, moved around and did some stuff. So I was controlling his device remotely from, from his website. Very, very nice. Very nicely done, and again, kudos to Clinton on this presentation. It got me so excited that now I have, and that's that's <laughs> that's what I'm talking about in terms of what I was uh, I was buying for my Black Friday. You know, now I have a maker kit, and oh, this is a. I just got that yesterday, actually. This is a a kit uh, with a lot of stuff here. It looks like looks more like a toy than anything else, 
but uh, has quite a lot of stuff here that I'll be messing around with the Internet of Things, starting with this thing here. Uh, the technology is called Particle, and uh, and this is called and Particle is the I think Particle is the company, and Photon is one of the technologies that they promote. So that's a maker kit, and I also have a. It's it's part of one of their kits. There, I also have an internet button which i should be, i'll be doing some stuff with this internet but not sure what maybe it's a it's a bad, bad no. signal you know i can press and i can have a bad <laughs> signal somewhere you know just like a network enabled button button exactly exactly it is and it has huh. different lights and you can press to do different things and again what i'm going to be doing with those two things here not sure, but I know that I'm going to have a busy holiday season break, you know? Mm -hmm. Nice. So again, very good, Clint. This is because of you, okay? That's based on your feedback and uh, the excitement that you, 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 you pushed us forward to, you know, get involved with this. You know what it feels like? It feels very much like uh, early days of, of something like, uh, like DNN early days of DNA and that there's not much out there, but there are some enthusiast people out there that are doing some stuff. And again, it feels like early days of those things, you know? In any case, the connection with DNA here is that this internet of things, you can create web services that will interact with particle and photon and will submit commands to the hardware, okay? So that's the connection between the DNN site and those devices, you know? So again, it could be inter it, it could be any website out there, to, to be honest with you. But of course, the context here is DNN, so we brought that, he brought that into a, a DNN context. So again, very nice. I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure what I'll be doing, but I will be, showing as things evolve and, uh, and next time I may have some lights blinking after I click on a button on the website. And let's see, let's see. I don't make prom promises, but I'll be, I'll be playing around. Okay, what else here? Oh, and I want just to finalize this topic by saying that if, out, if, uh, if you have kids, uh, there are lots of things that you can do about th those kinds of kits. This is not for kids really, but there is a, there's a company called LittleBits, LittleBits.cc, and I have it in front of me again. It will be in the in the video notes that you can buy hardware kits for kids to get them involved with those things as well. I show a, a demo video to my ten year old daughter, and she wants the kit for her her, her as as her Christmas present, you know. So so again. It's better than playing Minecraft all day long, you know. So that's 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 a good alternative um, for kids out there. Not for the younger ones, but I tend to think that after eight, nine years old, I mean, they they can potentially enjoy playing with those things because those are magnets, and you can create connections just by snapping things together. You know, very easy, very very. And again, let's see let's see what she'll be doing after the holidays. Um, what else here? Okay, so that was that meetup from Southern Friday and user group. And again, kudos for kudos to Ryan Morgan and David Point Dexter for putting that uh, nice user group and making that available as a go-to meeting. So uh, remote people like myself can enjoy the, the presentation as well. I think you met Ryan Moore. Go ahead. Was it Ryan Moore? Ryan Moore is the president of the user group, and then David Point Dexter is the vice president or, or something. No? Got it, right. Okay, uh, December is coming again, uh, end of the year. And as I did last year, last year I've sent out a survey uh, related to DNN to understand what were the biggest pain points that people had with DNN. And I got great feedback, very interesting feedback. And based on that feedback, I put together this uh, article that I'm showing right now. 
my intention is to do this every year. So every year I want to put out a DNN survey to get to know. Now this year, I'm not going to just focus on the pain points. And that's, that's one of the things that I was criticized a little bit uh, last year because I was asking about the, the bad things uh, around DNN and how about the positive things. So I'll be expanding a little bit the survey to ask for what are the things that you love in DNN and things that you may not love so much in DNN and things that they have done right or it was done right in 2015. So I will be sending this out most likely by mid-December. So uh, you're going to get in your inboxes a link to the survey eventually at some point in December. And if you have the chance, it won't take more than two minutes or three minutes to answer that. It would be very important to understand. And again, my intention is to share that with the community. I, I gather this data. I have a look at this data. And then I, I send out a, um, what I think it's a nice report about the data that was gathered. And I think it's important to be done once once a year. And I think it's useful for anyone that is part of the DNN ecosystem to see what's going on, to see what needs improvement, to see what's getting better and better, to see the excellent things that we have in our community. It's not only about the technology, it's about the community as well. So uh, keep, keep uh, on the lookout for that uh, survey link. Okay, interviews, interviews. I had uh, I have done an interview with Salar Golestanian, the founder of Salaro.com. Salar has been involved with DNN uh, at the, in the very early stages up to 2009. Today they are still involved with DNN, but a bit a bit loosely involved. Uh, it was a good talk to him, and he, he actually has a, a quite a good mod, a good survey mod, which by the way. I'll be using his survey module to do the DNN survey that I'll be uh, that I'll be sending out there. So, but but I may have only one more interview for the DNN store because right now I'm finding hard to to, to find people that wants to get interviewed. You know, some people they are not uh, they don't speak English uh, very well. Uh, not even broken English like myself. Uh, so they are not very comfortable doing interviews. And to be honest, to be quite frank, I'm I'm running out of, of, of people to interview on the DNN store side, you know. So I may have one last interview to do in December. That's what I'm hoping. And then I that cycle of interviews will stop. And I'm I'm planning to restart this in January with a new with a new uh, set of interviews, this time around a little bit more focused on the MVP guys and the MVP uh, alumni. Let's call it this way, and let's see how how I am able to push that forward. But most likely for now, I'm gonna have just one more interview for the DNN store, and that will be stopping that interview cycle, and I'll be getting to a new one. Can I can I give one quick? Um interesting note on your interviews uh was it last month you interviewed or the month before you interviewed jason lashawn with on my team with blue bolt and um we were talking about pack flash and the our bravo search product um we actually got a potential client who saw the bravo the video the interview you did with jason and saw his demo on bravo search and which resulted in in a call and um, and, a, and a very strong potential lead. So I I would just like to say to other vendors out there if they're watching that you know you never know where uh, a a potential lead can come from. And one of ours came from an Addison interview. <laughs> and you know what? So here's my bank account and here's my. <laughs> <laughs> We'll let you know if it actually turns into some money, but uh, <laughs> no, it, but there, it's, it, you know, it, any way you can get your product, it, you know, or your company name out there, um, I think is, is well worth the 30 minutes to, to uh, talk to my good friend here. <laughs> no, let, let me tell you, you're, you're very right. And, and some, 
some technical people, they don't realize that you need to have distribution and exposure. I, I have to admit, this is not much. The interviews are not seen by thousands of people. They are not. That's fine. But it's one more place out there that your name is exposed to. And as, as Scott has just you know, mentioned, we never know where a lead or a potential client can come from. So the more you get yourself exposed out there, the more chances you have for people to find you. So again, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, so that was about the interviews. Let me see here. Yep, that's done. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, videos that I have been putting out, I have finished the fundamentals, the beginners, and I have started the advanced. So we have some videos here already in the DNN 7 for advanced course. Again, working every month to get more videos on those, on those courses. So I still have to finish advanced and I have the mastery as well. And that will lead us to DNN 8. So again, I have an advanced set, but out there, the, the link is here. Uh, Scott, you have you said that you have something planned uh, that goes together with the with the DNA contest. Yeah, hopefully, uh, like I said, it's, I'm gonna work up an MVC module, and um, hopefully, it'll correlate to the contest. Um, so it'll be something more than just the standard, you know, um, simple item list and edit thing. Um, hopefully, it'll be a little more uh, something that you know our our viewers can get, you know, use as a very, uh, you know, get, get a lot of functionality out of a project to use in their projects. Very good, very good. Okay, so I'm going to follow now with a, oops, a blog post, which now it's giving an error message here on my screen. Okay, perfect. It's back again. So, uh, as we all know, uh, Daniel Metal is a very prolific blogger. So most of the blog posts out there in the Daniel community are around uh, his thoughts and to sex content. Uh, there's one in particular that I, that it's, it's interesting, the timing, because the timing is so, it, it coincides with something that I'm doing, which is very relevant to, to this blog post. So his blog post is JS rules. And then the only scene that he commits here is that he puts a WP logo in the blog post, but that's fine. That's fine. I mean, it's all, it's all good. He's just saying that uh, WordPress is now doing a lot with uh, JavaScript and you should check this blog post because what he's preaching here is that from now on more and more, we're going to have very thin server side and more I mean, more server side services web services and then we have we're gonna have a richer client side very much based on javascript and javascript frameworks so again very interesting uh blog post and a very good segue to what i have to mention next which is my tip of the month so my tip of the, tip of the month is a little bit involving and actually it, it's, it starts with you, uh, Scott. So my, 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 my tip of the month is this. A week ago, I set up, I said to myself, I need to start developing because I do a lot of coding, still a lot of coding. I'm not as good of a coder as Scott is, but I do a lot of coding as well. And I come from the very traditional server side heavily coding, you know, getting the UI ready in the server side and spitting that out to the client side. But I said, you know what? And for months now, I have been saying, I have to learn Angular. I have to learn spa development. I have to learn those things. And a week ago, just a week ago, I set out myself to, and to, to go through some training with Scott's videos. And the first one I'm going to recommend is this one here, is the client-centric module development in DNN. And again, all those links will be in the video post. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm 
for the developers out there, I'm gonna try to sell this, and I'm gonna, I'm going to explain my, my trajectory, my the, the road that I have gone through for the past week, and I, I'm just talking about one week, not months, just a week. So again, a week ago, I said, you know what? Let me start with this video here, client-centric module development in DNN. Again, done by uh, Scott. Just about, I don't know it's it. It must have been. Uh, more than a, over a year ago, I, I don't I don't see the date here, but for sure this is at, this is at least a year and a half ago. But so so this video here will explain you how to create the web APIs, how to create the service side, and how to hook this up in the client side with uh, with uh, with Knockout, with Knockout, which is basically a two-way binding type of framework. It's a, it's a, so it just does that and it does that well. So it gives you the introduction and, and the mindset of starting to program from a client side perspective. It's a very good introduction. Again, it gives you a good foundation for the server side of what you have to do on the server and use knockout on the client side. Okay, great. I went through that, got it to working. Perfect. But, I, but, I knew that I want to use Angular, not Knockout, and they are slightly different. I mean, they 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 serve they serve different. In a way, Angular can do what Knockout does as well, and a lot more. So I started this video, and then I graduated myself to introducing Angular concepts. Sorry, I, uh, Angular module development, which again it's another series from Scott. Now. Uh, when you start looking at this video, Scott will tell you, hey, you should look at this video, this video, this video. I said, you know what? I don't have patience to do all of those. I just did for, for the client-centric one, which I just showed. And I went through this right away. And when I went through the training that Scott has put together with Angular and DNN, I was able to convert right away a module that I was working for a client I converted right away to use Angular. Uh, so that was the second step. The second step was to go through this one here. Now, after you're going, after you're gone through this one, which you get introduced, introduced to Angular, how to hook up this with DNN. I said, you know what? This is not an Angular course. This is a course that introduces you to Angular and DNN. I want to dive deeper into the Angular side of things. So. I went to the web and I found a nice 70 minutes introduction video of Angular JS fundamentals. And this video is done by Dan Walling. Very nice video. It really took my, the knowledge that I had started from uh, watching uh, Scott's videos. It, it brought that knowledge in, Angu in the Angular side. Uh, a, a notch higher, you know. So again, 60 minutes here got me a way ahead in terms of my knowledge on Angular. Now I said, okay, so if six minutes was I was able to, you know, to get to this level, I want to move a level up. So what I end up doing is I end up going to Udemy, and I've watched a full course from the same author of this 60 minute video, Dan Walling. He has uh, an entire course there, which is called Angular JS Jumpstart with Dan Walling. So I went through this course as well, and man, let me tell you, I'm a ninja. I feel like I'm an, I'm a ninja in Angular right now. You know, I'm loving Angular. There's no way that I can that I will ever look back. To be honest with you, after after. After you, you click things, after things click in your head and, and see how things work here, you don't look back. I mean, there's no way that you look back. I don't know if you, I don't know how you operate there, Scott, but uh, there's no way I'm looking back here, you know? So, so let, let, me, let me finish my spiel here. I, I still have a, a little bit to, to cover. So uh, the, the, the course that I got from, you know, from Dan, Regular price is 99, but uh, a link that I'm going to post will, will get you the course for 30 bucks. So again, for 30 bucks, this is uh, over 11 hours of, uh, of training in, in Angular. 
Again, you don't need to go through the entire 11 hours. 70% uh, of that, you're gonna be well covered in Angular and be, again, feeling like a ninja in Angular and never looking back. And if you even want to go one step beyond that, Uh, the same guy, you know, uh, Dan Walling, he has in yet another course in Angular called Custom Directives, which again, I have not gone through this one, but I intend to at some point. So again, get together the videos from, from Scott with some of the videos from, from, from this guy, from this, uh, which by the way, seems to be very well known in this space. And I, I didn't know him before that. Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna be, you'll never be looking back. Let me just finalize with this. The moment that this clicked in my head was really when I understood that by using Angular, and I have and I have a, a PDF here open from, uh, from Dan's course, it's really a matter of control-oriented development versus data-oriented development from, from a client side. Usually when you talk about client side, We think about, okay, so now I have to get the IDs of, of controls and the IDs of this and the IDs of that. And I have to, to see when a value gets changed in, one of, in a text input and things like that. So, but then again, when you put Angular in context here, you forget about all of that. You, you don't care about, about control IDs anymore. You just care about the data and how to handle the data because the entire binding of everything else, it's taken care of by, by Angular. So that was what clicked me. And again, to finalize, I'm not looking back. I'm having a lot of not only fun, but renewal, renewed excitement about, about development. I'm done. My spiel is done. Scott, any, anything to finalize here? No, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the one last concept I, I haven't covered um, in Angular that a lot of people I think are interested in is the routing, um, the ability to swap out views. But, um, you know, my last video, I think was a few months back on more advanced Angular concepts, which I think explains a, a better way to bootstrap into DNN your Angular module and uh, and doing using directives, which has been a big Uh, help for me and, and a new direction I'm going with products that I'm developing because the directives allow you to more encapsulate you know what you want to uh, your, your functionality so that you're, you're not dealing with the, these huge thousand line you know JavaScript files right so uh, yeah I, I encourage you to look at the advanced angular one because I think it's uh, uh, th that one step further as well as knowing what Dan, the Dan Whalen stuff, which is really good, but, but knowing how to, how to plug it into DNN in a better way, which is, again, I, I, I lifted that concept from Too Sexy Content, which is how they built it in their open source product too. So, you know, there's a lot of smart people out there. You know, I, I, you, you think I'm smart, but really I'm just taking stuff from other smart people. So <laughs> very good, very good, Scott. There was something else that I wanted to mention. Oh. It's still a little bit close to that topic. Uh, the next Hangout, which is supposed to be uh, early December, the ones that uh, we stroll and Joe Brickman, they put together, it's supposed to be with Ralph Williams and he's supposed to be talking about spa development because uh, just keep in mind that everything that I spoke about, you know, Angular, it's really around spa development. And, and, and yeah, so, so again, uh, go for it, guys. If you haven't had a chance to have a look at uh, this kind of... Uh, Oh, by the way, that's what I was, I was forgetting. One thing that I, I asked that question myself and I saw someone in the forum, Scott, asking that as well, I forward to you the, the question is, again, you don't need to answer that now, but again, it, it, it flagged my head. What is the best way really, if you have uh, a, 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 a traditional module done in DNN with different views, you know, the more conventional way of, of working Uh, previously with DNN, different views. Uh, what is the best approach or the, the recommended approach of putting those views together and again, creating a spa out of three or four different views, you know? So again, that, I don't know if, if you're, if the latest, some of the latest ver, uh, view, 
some of the latest videos that you put together, if they address that or not. But that's a question that uh, that that popped up in my head and someone else in the forum too, you know. Right, which is why I mentioned about the angular routing. Um, you know, I, I if you look at the the, the demonstration that I did in the advanced one, uh, advanced angular video I, I did a, a couple months ago. It, I mean, it does have that that um, list view uh, concept, and it's using a, a dire an Angular directive as the as a view. Um, but uh, so you can certainly use directives. I also ha uh, show a technique for uh, automating the uh, your your um, compression of all your Java Angular JavaScript files at, at the time you do the build, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, the, the ability to break out your your views into Angular directives, and then which makes you know a very a lot more JavaScript files on your project, but you have that that technique in the build process for um, compressing and compositing them into one JavaScript. Um, that's one way, but I think the better way, in, in which I'll, I, I'm sure I'll have to wrap up in, in a future video, will be talking about partial views in Angular and routing. Okay, good, good. So, so yeah, so I, I guess I'm gonna follow up on, on those on those next videos, the, the more advanced stuff as well. Um, okay, so so again, to finalize that point is that. If I was able in a week, and I'm, I'm not a great developer, I mean, I'm, I'm by no means close to uh, the level that Scott is, but if I'm able within a week to feel confident enough uh, to develop from now on using Angular, using web APIs, anyone out there that does uh, develop in a more traditional way of uh, with DNN can do the same thing. You know, if I was able to do that in a week, you can do as well. Okay, so yeah, done here. Now, once you finalize, let's see if we still have some time here. Yeah, I can. I can. I guess I can take two minutes here to finalize with with this one. Uh, I want to talk a little bit. I want to sh just to share a little bit of uh, what I call a horror history, a horror horror story. Sorry, not not horror history. Horror story. So this was just this week, this past week, actually, two days ago. Uh, that, that was with myself. I sometimes I bring a website, uh, a client's website, to my local environment, uh, and I'm talking about uh, you know coding and developing a new module. And actually, that was the the Angular related module that I, that I was just mentioning. And I was developing on my local system, and I brought their website, their database, and I restored that in my environment so I could develop that. And a few days ago, I started to get a message from Windows telling me that I ran out of space. I ran out of hard drive space. So my hard drive is not that big. It's a, it's a, it's a, I'm gonna round it. It's a 600 uh, gigabytes hard drive, but it was not supposed to be full. It was not supposed to be full like that. And I kept getting this message and I kept, I kept moving files away from my hard drive in outside, uh, you know, storage. And, but again, it kept filling. So it kept feeling all the time. All the time I had this message from Windows telling me that, hey, your hard drive is running out of space. And I just made, just for example, 20 gig of, of, of space because I moved uh, sites, I'm sorry, I moved files outside of my, of my hard drive. How come that it's taken again? And I'm gonna tie this, don't worry, I'm gonna tie this back to DNN at some point. But so I kept seeing that and I said, you know what, maybe it's a virus, maybe it's a malware, maybe it's something that is running here. So I started to run some, you know, spyware, malware, antivirus, and nothing was detect detected, nothing. Then a tip that I, I gave uh, about, I know, a few months ago called uh, Winder stats, stats, it shows the statistics for the file sizes of your, of, uh, it shows statistics about, about the files and the size of files on your hard drive. And I opened this application, I opened this guy, and this application only showed me that I had occupied 200 gigabytes, but I have 600. And, there is, and it's, it tells me that only 200 is occupied and it doesn't account for 400. It doesn't know the other, where the other 400 is. Okay, so that's strange. And I, I did some research. 
So here's the conclusion. First of all is that when there, sometimes you have to run the application to, to analyze your hard drive as administrator, because then it will have access to each and every single file of your system and it will report properly. So that's the first catch. The first catch is that I had to right click on WinDeer icon and run it as administrator. When I, once I run it as admin, admin uh, administrator, I found out this huge 400 gigabytes of uh, file size. What that was, that was the log file of the database that I was running locally. But why the heck it grow so big? That's simple. It's simple after, after words. The database was set up to run in full recovery mode. That's important. That's uh, that. And again, that's, that's the key lesson that I want to, you guys should take out of this conversation. There are two modes that a database uh, two recovery modes that uh, a SQL database can run. It can run simple or full recovery. So recovery simple, recovery full. The thing with recovery full is that if you don't have a backup strategy to take care of the log that keeps growing, it will grow humongously. It, it will be huge like it was in my case. So usually I only recommend to use uh, a database in recovery full mode if you know what you're doing because otherwise the database will grow quite a lot. Recovery full mode, it means that you can go back to any particular time that you want a, a snapshot from your database. So it grows a lot. It can grow a lot. So ideally, I usually run my database in, in, a, in a simple mode. I'm just going to show a command that can, you can figure out which mode is your database running from. Here's a command. I'm going to post that in the video posts and it will give the result and it will show the database name and the, and if it's running in simple, in our case here, it's running in simple or in full mode. If you want to switch very simple as well, there is another letter script that you can run and you can switch from full to simple. You can just say alter database, database name, set recover simple and i'm gonna just paste the simple here again this is how you can check which mode it's running and then change it very simple you can just replace the database name make it simple and then you run yet another script to shrink the log i'm gonna post all all three scripts in the video post so again run one to detect which mode run another one to, to change it to simple and run the third one to be able to shrink the log. Because if you are in full mode, you cannot shrink the database easily, not easily. So again, you have to flip to simple and then you can shrink. Bottom line is that I was able to detect 400 gigabytes of log file, shrink that, get rid of that and get rid of my problem. But it took me quite a lot of time to figure this out. So lesson learned here is that have a look at the database and be mindful if any application that you are running is not showing what you want it to show, try it, try to run it as an administrator. I see that situation quite a lot, even with Visual Studio. Visual Studio, you have to run to, to get full, full features of Visual Studio. You have to run it in, in admin mode, you know. Again, my horror store, that's done. Uh, Scott, uh, anything from your side? I mean, do you have any, any tips or tricks? That, that was my... Again, my tip was the spy in Angular, and that was my horror store. Is, is Scott, anything from you? I'll send you a maintenance script uh, I wrote. It, uh, we run it at client sites um, on the SQL agent uh, every night at like 2 a.m. or whatever, but it does backup, uh, just like what you said, backup, truncate the transaction log, and re-index, rebuild indexes, lots of other stuff. We find that um, just running that script on the SQL agent every night uh, will keep a DNN site running in tip-top shape because the transaction log is a nightmare, especially in terms of backing up and restoring. The other thing is that that grows too large. Your backups take forever. Your restorations take forever. So if in the event of, of 
of a failure, it actually is hurtful for you because it takes so long to replay that transaction log if it's a month long and it's like you said, several gigabytes of, of data. Perfect, so that's about it from my side. Anything else from your side, Scott? No, nope, that's it for me. And it looks like my kid's knocking on the door and he's wanting me to go. So right time, right time, right time there. Okay, so all right. Well, thank you very we'll much. We'll see you next month then, I guess, right? And we talk next month, uh, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Take care.